Hey everyone and welcome back. This is day 13 of our series where we're exploring how to use Spark within Microsoft Fabric. And today's a very important one, especially useful if you're coming from a SQL background. You might have lots of skills and knowledge about how to do complex SQL queries. And the good news is that you can use this knowledge within Spark. And today we're going to be showing you exactly how to do that. So the title might be a little bit misleading to some because up until this point, we've actually been using the Spark SQL API, which is where the data frames that we've been using comes from. But specifically today, I want to talk about this kind of construct that we haven't done much on before. And that's the spark.sql. Now we have used it for getting data from a lake house table, right? So you remember if you drag this table into the canvas, into the notebook, we're gonna get this auto-generated Spark SQL statement. Select star, get me all the columns from this lake house and this table specifically. And it's gonna by default give you a limit of a thousand. So that's an example of a SQL statement that we've run on our table. And that's what this looks like here. But we can also do more than just a simple select statement. In fact, we can do pretty much anything that you want to do that you can do in SQL. And we can just pass in this SQL query string into this spark.sql function. And it's going to act like a SQL statement. And it's going to give us the results in a data frame for any of the kind of normal SQL functions or SQL query statements that you would use. For example, let's go into something a bit more advanced. So the first one, we were just doing a select star, but this is just to show you that we can actually also run other SQL statements. So you could do a select here, I'm concatenating. And let me just run this one first, just to show you what this data looks like. Okay, so this is what our data set looks like. We've got five columns, three rows, data about property sales in United States. So what if I wanted to maybe merge some of these columns and by merge, I mean concatenate, not, not merge. And I can run that and I know how to do that in SQL. Well, what I can do is just run spark.sql and pass in the SQL statement. So what I've got here is a concat and I'm concatenating the address and the city with a comma in the middle. and creating an alias for that column name. I'm saying, okay, call the column name full address. And I'm also getting the type column, which is another column here from our database. And here I'm using a where statement, right? So previously you might've seen, I did a video on data frame filtering. Well, we can actually, if we know SQL, we can just embed the script here. And you're probably hating me for not telling you this earlier, but you know, it's good to know both ways of doing it because both have their, their merits. So if you're strong at SQL, you can just write where type like house, which is going to return all of the values that contain somewhere this string house, because we've got the two percent sign at the beginning and at the end of the string. So it's going to say, I don't care what's before it. I don't care what's after it, but it needs to have house in there somewhere. So this is what we get, and we get a data frame returned. I've just displayed it here. We've got the concatenation, our full address, which is the single address concatenated with the city, which is what we wanted. And we're filtering using this SQL where statement, only the houses. So that's quite interesting and quite useful. So then you start to think, okay, so why wouldn't I just do that in SQL? Fair enough. I've got a whole data warehouse. Maybe I can just create a shortcut and I can just write SQL. What's the point in doing this in Spark? Well, we can start to layer in some interesting ways of working with this now, because previously we we're just giving kind of hard coding this statement. But what if we wanted to do something a bit more dynamic? Well, we can start to do here. What I'm doing is I've created an F string. So if you put F in front of your string in Python, you can pass in variables into your string. So here it's not really highlighted very well in the kind of the formatting of the cell. But if you can see these curly brackets here, what I'm doing is I'm passing in a limit variable and the limit I've defined 
in this list, I've got a few different limits. Now this is just a kind of toy example to show you how we can do dynamic SQL. And I'm saying, okay, for each of the limits in limits, so one, two, three, four, grab this statement, assign it to a data frame and show me that data frame. So what this is gonna do is gonna loop through three times because we've got three values in our limits list. And first we're gonna get one row, then we're gonna get two rows, and then we're gonna get three rows. Now again, this is just to show you the functionality, like this specific example is useless, but we can see we've got one row, two row, three rows. But the idea behind it is quite powerful because we might not care about limits. In fact, no one cares about limits. It's just to showcase the functionality. What we might wanna do is have a list of table names. So maybe we want to iterate through lots of tables. We've got a hundred tables in our lake house and we create a list of these tables and we iterate through these tables, injecting the table name into this SQL statement, grabbing our data and then doing something useful with it. You know, um, you know, creating some statistics, feature engineering, all this, whatever you want to do with your data, do something more useful, not just showing it. So I hope you're beginning to understand kind of the, the power that we can get by combining SQL, our SQL knowledge with Python and Spark. And we can kind of iterate between the two. Now, one other SQL-like functionality that we get with Spark is temporary views. So again, we're gonna read in our data frame. Uh, we're gonna refresh that because we've been playing around with it a little bit here. And we're gonna call this function and it's create or replace temp view. And what this is gonna do is create a view. And this kind of persists for the duration of our session. So it's really useful if we want to kind of store a temporary view, it's a bit like a temporary table in SQL world, and we give it a name, so we've called it sales fact. And so if we don't want to use data frames, we can use these temporary views. And the way that we can use this or reference this in future SQL statements, right? So we can say spark.sql select star from sales fact. And we can do other stuff in the SQL world before bringing it back into the Python world and saving it to a table. So just another way of working with SQL and Python in Spark. So again, what we're doing here is obviously we've saved our temporary view called sales fact, and we're just selecting it. Just to give you a bit of a few different ways of working with SQL and Python combined. Okay, so that's the end of this video. We looked at how to use spark.sql in a bit more detail and Luckily, if you've come with lots of SQL knowledge, now you know how to use that SQL knowledge in Spark.